There's going to be more marriage than ever before, with another survey showing majority support for the freedom to marry. So why are Republicans spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to defend a law that could tear apart legally married couples like Henry and Josh? There's promising signs for marriage in New York and Scotland, but a legal setback in Montana is likely to postpone weddings for years. And the internet's most popular weekly LGBT marriage news video show gets a brand new logo. I'm Matt Baum in San Francisco, and welcome to the all-new Marriage News Watch for April 24th, 2011. Marriage News Watch is made possible by Marriage Equality USA, Carbonated, a creative agency, and viewers like you. You've probably noticed that This Week in Prop 8 is now Marriage News Watch. It's basically the same show, only with a better name, a better website, a better logo, and now I'm standing on the left. Click here to subscribe to our new YouTube channel and visit us over at marriagenewswatch.com to find our new Facebook page, our Twitter feed, our RSS feed, and our email newsletter. And there's also going to be one more change, more guests and contributors, and that's where you come in. Whatever the name, I produce this show for the LGBT community, because we're all fighting for marriage equality together. And now the show's not just for the LGBT community, it's also going to be by the community. I interview a lot of leaders and newsmakers, and I want to hear from you. If there's news happening near you, hearings, a protest, someone hurt by discrimination, get in touch with us so we can share your story. For example, here's some photos of the tax day protest in Los Angeles last week. Nothing too fancy, the organizers at Get Equal just took a few photos, sent them along, and now we can all see what happened and get inspired to take our own actions. And even if nothing's happening right now, we still want to have an army of news watchers on the ground to be the first to let the community know when something important pops up. We have eyes and ears all over the world, so let's get connected. Write to contact at marriagenewswatch.com if you've got a story to tell right now, or if you can sit tight and sound the alarm when news happens near you. Let's take a look at news headlines this week. There's a lot to talk about. Another survey this week shows national majority support for marriage. This time it's a CNN poll that puts us ahead by 51 to 47 percent. Now that's still a narrow margin, but they didn't interview people under 35, so the number's likely higher. This is the fourth recent survey to show us pulling ahead, but congressional Republicans are still pursuing regressive anti-gay campaigns. This week, John Boehner revealed that he's hired Paul Clement, a lawyer with the law firm King & Spaulding, to defend the Defense of Marriage Act. Taxpayers are going to pay big for Clement. He typically charges $900 an hour, and although he's giving Boehner a slight discount, his contract sets aside half a million dollars, just for starters. That contract also contains a gag order, preventing any King & Spaulding employees from advocating for DOMA's repeal. The firm currently has a rating of 95% from the Human Rights Campaign, but not for long. HRC has launched a campaign to make sure that King & Spaulding's clients, employees, and law schools know that the firm is raking in hundreds of thousands of dollars by actively harming LGBT couples. For an example of that harm, we don't have to look any further than Josh Vandiver and Henry Volandia in New Jersey. Now, even though they're legally married, the Department of Homeland Security is trying to deport Henry back to Venezuela. This Friday, Immigration and Customs denied a request to terminate removal proceedings. They didn't have to do that. They have the freedom to put cases like those on hold. In fact, they do it all the time for straight couples, for example, with the widows of combat veterans. Henry and Josh aren't asking the government to recognize their marriage, just to respect it. But time's running out. They'll have their final deportation hearing on May 6th. For more information, let's turn to one of the men at the center of that story. All right, we're talking to Josh Vandeveer right now. Uh, Josh is facing a deportation of his partner, Henry. Josh, I, I want to get some more details about just who you guys are. How did you, how did you meet Henry? Well, Henry and I met here in Princeton, New Jersey, uh, four and a half years ago now. And we sort of hit it off immediately. I had never had that experience with anyone else. We went to dinner. I remember sitting across from the dinner table with him and there was a little light between us and it was lighting up his face and his smile and I sort of forgot about what he was talking about at certain points just because I was enamored with him mm -hmm. and we ended up spending sort of every day with each other after that point and, and moved in after a few months and, and it was all happily ever after um, from that point on. Was there a point at which you knew this is the guy that I want to spend the rest of my life with? It was interesting. We never fought. We always just loved being with each other over the months and then years that we were together. So within a year or two, we started thinking, at least I started seriously thinking that, yeah, this is the person that I'd like to marry and spend the rest of my life with. How long have you been together? Well, four and a half years, almost. And then we've been married for eight months or so. We married in August of 2010. And now, it must be difficult to plan your life together and your careers with this uncertainty about his, his citizenship hanging over your heads. 
Yeah, it's a huge uncertainty. I mean, my future is being determined on May 6th as well. That's the date when Henry's judge could say that Henry is going to be deported shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. So I can't go about building my life with him. We can't build our life together with that date hanging over us like that. He's a dancer, a modern, a salsa dancer. I'm a graduate student in politics. I want to be a professor someday. So that's, that's our life. And we want to just go about building it together. That's why we have to get past this threat of deportation, which is so amazing that this could even be something that an American would be facing, having their spouse deported. With, with now that you're facing this, this potential separation, uh, can, you even, can you imagine how you would say goodbye to Henry if, if the country made him leave? No, I couldn't imagine saying goodbye to my spouse. I mean, it would be a minimum of 10 years that he, he would be separated if, if that were to happen. And I'm determined not to let that happen, not to let my spouse be deported and separated from me like that. I mean, there are so many other couples like us who are facing this kind of situation where their spouse is being ripped away from them. And it's unnecessary. The executive branch could decide right now to stop these deportations. We understand that the Defense of Marriage Act is the law of the land, as the president has said. But there's nothing that dictates that he has to, and his administration, have to actively prosecute the deportations of spouses of American citizens due to a law that he thinks is unconstitutional. So if people want to help and, and contribute to this cause of stopping these deportations, what do you recommend? How can people get involved? Well, the most urgent thing is that we all have to work in ways to convince Secretary Napolitano and Holder, the Attorney General, to take these steps. We can do that by contacting our Congress people, our senators and congressmen. We have a petition to Napolitano and urging them to take action, basically, the, the executive branch. So we have a petition you can find through our Facebook page, facebook.com slash save our marriage. And there's a petition through allout.org, which is a major organization that's helping us as well. And then each of us individually can contact our members of Congress. I mean, ultimately, they need to join the handful of members of Congress that have already done so in calling on Napolitano to make this decision right away because it's urgent. This is an irreparable harm that I as an American and other Americans will suffer if our spouses are taken away from us while this Defense of Marriage Act is being challenged and and it's fate determined. Yeah, time's really of the essence, so hopefully we can get as many people involved as possible. Josh, thank you so much for speaking with us, and, and really wish you the best of luck with, with pursuing this. Thank you very much, man. You can help Josh and Henry by putting pressure on your congresspeople. Call their offices and ask if they've signed the letters to Janet Napolitano, asking to halt deportation proceedings for LGBT couples. If they have, say thanks. If they're on the fence, or if they haven't, tell them about Henry and Josh. Meanwhile, while we ratchet up the noise on immigration, marriage might finally happen in New York State. For more on that situation, let's check in with Kathy Marino-Thomas, board president of Marriage Equality New York. Kathy, it looks like the legislature is going to take up the marriage equality bill soon. Any estimate for when that's going to happen? Well, we've heard anywhere from three weeks to six weeks. So, so we're, hoping, we're hoping for the three weeks. <laughs> right. Things didn't go so smoothly in 2009. What's going to be different this time around? Well, you know, the governor is a much more politically powerful person than our last governor was, although he was fabulous. Um, this governor seems to have relationships on both sides of the aisle. That'll be extremely helpful. He's, uh, he's from a political family. Um, they're very... They're very well connected and they, they do very well in social justice type issues. He has a very good record. Um, he's putting an awful lot of um, promise behind this. We are also working, uh, there are much more volunteers on the ground this time. Uh, there's much more concentrated effort, um, more in a bipartisan way. So I think all in all, I think that we're looking at um, a really strong uh, momentum here in New York. And what's Marriage Equality New York doing to push this forward? We have volunteers out every night getting letters signed, um, making flash phone calls on cell phones to senators' offices uh, at, at train stations and uh, bus depots in front of 
supermarkets and malls. Um, we are targeting the senators a little better. We have, um, oh my God, we are working all over the state this time. We have everywhere from the western New York to uh, very high up north uh, to the city areas and all the boroughs. We are working with HRC and Empire State Pride Agenda, uh, with Get Equal, with uh, Marriage Equality New York, um, all in uh, a coalition together. Freedom to Marry is on board here. We have um, coordinated press releases going out. We're just getting it in the news everywhere we can. Queer Rising has been wonderful uh, with some street action around this. As we all know, no social justice issue gets accomplished without a good street action or two. Um, so really everyone is just putting everything they have into it this time. And so New York already has domestic partnerships. So what's an example of a situation where domestic partnership just isn't the same or isn't good enough uh, as a substitute and uh, people need marriage? Well, domestic partnerships here in New York um, are really territorial. So we have one domestic partnership that's only for New York City and the five boroughs. Outside of that, there is no coverage. That will gain you around 10 rights. And just for the record, it costs a dollar more than a marriage license. Just saying. So if people want to get involved and help out, <clears throat> what should they do? Where should they go? Uh, www.meny.us for Marriage Equality New York uh, to get involved with the grassroots effort. Um, that's the most direct way. You can get to us through that through our direct website or through Marriage Equality USA as well. There's a link uh, on that website that also will bring you to us. And are there ways for people uh, around the country who may not be in New York to help? Oh, yes. Um, you can donate uh, through either Marriage Equality USA or Marriage Equality New York directly. Um, you can do phone calls online, much like we're communicating now. We have systems now where we can set you up with uh, um, a little list of the right senators to call, and you can call them remotely. Um, letter writing is always good, and through Facebook. Also, if you know anyone in New York, you can connect them with, uh, with us through Facebook, on Twitter, through the website, and in all the various uh, different ways. Fantastic. Well, Kathy Marino Thomas is the board president of Marriage Equality New York. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and I know we'll be speaking again through this, uh, through this next few weeks. So thanks, Matt. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Now for a quick roundup of headlines around the world. A setback in Montana as a judge rules that he can't force the legislature to provide marriage equality. The ACLU is likely to appeal that ruling. After a disappointing legislative session, Equality Maryland's board has fired Executive Director Morgan Manessa Sheets. Over in Scotland, four out of five major parties support marriage for gay couples. And as Prince William and Kate Middleton gear up for their wedding, protests at Buckingham Palace are pushing the couple to support marriage for British subjects. That's the news this week. Thanks for joining us. Remember, we have all new everything now that we're Marriage News Watch. Click here to subscribe to our new YouTube channel and visit us over at marriagenewswatch.com to find our new Twitter, Facebook page, RSS feed, and email newsletter. Or you can take a shortcut and go to mnwatch.com. See you next week. Marriage News Watch is made possible by Marriage Equality USA, Carbonated, a creative agency, and viewers like you.